Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the virtual college fair tonight. We have a great program for you. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, I just have a few housekeeping items. Um, you'll be able to use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off so our panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, this is just met one of the many sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a one week at the same website where you registered. And just another quick reminder, you can use that Q&A button at the bottom to ask questions at any time. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. First up is Pace University. And you are on mute, Jessica. Sorry about that. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Drennan. I am an undergraduate admission counselor at Pace University. Pace University is a four-year private university located in New York. We have about 9,000 undergraduate students. About 6,000 of those students are on the New York City campus and about 3,000 on the Westchester campus. So the Westchester campus is about half the size population-wise. And overall, we are a small to medium sized school. Pace in New York City, we are in downtown Manhattan, right in the financial district. We are about a block away from the Brooklyn Bridge. We are a couple of blocks away from the Freedom Tower. And we're about a five minute walk away from Wall Street. Something cool about our New York City campus is a lot of New York City schools are spread out. But Pace is not. Everything is right within a five block radius of each other. So you never have to take the subway to get to class. Everything's right there in walking distance. So it's super convenient. We do have four residence halls on the New York City campus. Two of them are primarily for freshmen. One of them is 182 Broadway, which is more suite style. So it will be three or four people in a room and you share a bathroom just with the people in your room. And that one has views of the Freedom Tower. And a couple of blocks away is Maria's Tower, which is actually located on top of our main building, One Pace Plaza. So the gym, the cafeteria, the library, all of that is a quick and easy elevator ride away. Housing is guaranteed all four years, as long as you submit your deposit before May 1st, but it's also never required. So you could live on campus or off campus. About 75% of our first year students do live on campus. So it's not a huge community school. We do have students coming from all over the country. We have students from 48 different states. And we also have a campus in Westchester County, New York. So that is a more suburban area. It's a more traditional college campus. You do kind of get the best of both worlds because you have that closed uh, college campus with the grass and the trees that the New York City campus kind of lacks, but you do still have access to New York City. So we're about a 45 minute trade ride into New York City, and we do have a free shuttle that runs between the two campuses. We are also, home to our division two sports on the Westchester campus. So all of our sports teams are on the Westchester campus. And again, we are division two. We do have six residence halls on the Westchester campus. And again, housing is guaranteed, but not required. Here at Pace, we have something that we like to call the Pace Path. It's kind of like every student's individualized roadmap. So it's how we combine your academic growth with your professional growth and your personal growth. So every student when they come to PACE is required to take a class called University 101. University 101 is taught by an academic advisor and it's a pastel course. So it's really just for the student's benefit, but they will ask you questions such as, do you want to study abroad? How many majors do you want to do? Do you want to do a double major? Do you want to add a minor? How many clubs do you want to join? What kind of internships do you want to do? And that's to get you planning out your four years at PACE. We want you getting out of the classroom and getting that hands-on experience while keeping your eye on the prize, which is to graduate in four years. So it's kind of like a transitioning class from being a senior in high school to a freshman in college. At Pace, we do have more than 100 undergraduate majors, so we are very academically diverse. Our average classroom size is about 18 to 20 students in a classroom. So fairly small classroom sizes. You get a lot of one-to-one -one time with your professor. You're never sitting in a huge lecture hall with 300 students. Up on the screen, you could see the different schools that we have. So we have our College of Health Professions, which includes health science and nursing. We have our Dyson College of Arts and Sciences, which is our widest umbrella. That includes biology, psychology, criminal justice, political science, and our School of Performing Arts. 
Then we do have a school of law with three plus three programs if you wanted to do your undergrad and law school all in six years. Our school of business, our school of education, and our school of computer science. So like I said, very academically diverse. Pace is a great place to explore different majors and kind of dip your toe into a lot of different fields to see what interests you. For the most part, our majors do out overlap between the campuses, but there are some that are specific to campus. So for example, nursing is only offered on the Westchester campus and our School of Performing Arts is only offered on the New York City campus. At Pace, we, want to, we have one of the biggest career services centers in the New York metro area. So we really emphasize hands-on learning. We want you getting out of the classroom. Some of our students will do paid internships and some will do them for class credit, but those internships are available to you. In the New York metro area, there is no shortage of companies looking for those young new interns. We have great alumni connections and your career advisor is going to help you build your resume, write cover letters, they will do practice mock interviews with you. They'll help you make a LinkedIn. So you're not going to be alone in looking for those internships. We want you getting those internships because we want you graduating with a job. We know internships are where job offers usually come from. So at Pace, we're really going to encourage you to go to the career center so that they can place you in the right internship for you. Now I'll talk a little bit about financial aid and merit scholarship. So when you apply to PACE, you are automatically considered for merit scholarships. You don't have to do anything extra. All you do is apply and you have that automatic consideration based off of your GPA. That can range from 10,000 to 29,000 per year. Then we do offer financial aid through the FAFSA, which you can apply for. Uh, and that's how you can get grants and loans and things like that. And as you can see up, up, up here on the screen, more than 95% of students do receive some sort of financial aid. For our application requirements, we are on the Common App as well as we have our own Pace University application. Then we ask for your official high school transcript. Uh, the average GPA for an incoming student is a 3.3. We are fully test optional, so we no longer require test scores. But if you do wanna send your test scores, the average SAT is an 1140 and the average ACT is a 23. And then two letters of recommendation and your essay or personal statement. Here are the deadlines. If you are a senior in high school, we do have early decision, early action. A school of performing arts deadline is December 15th and regular decision and nursing is February 15th. Here is my contact information. So that is my email, jdrennan2 at pace.edu. So please feel free to reach out to me if you do have any questions, I'm happy to connect with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jessica. And next up is Hofstra University. Okay. All right, perfect. Hello, everyone. So glad you could join this evening. Um, my name is Christy. I am the direct admission counselor for all of our Northern California students. Um, and this is where I would normally be welcoming you if you were coming to see us on campus in person. This is our lovely admissions center. And I'm happy to talk to you about our university. So overall, Hofstra is about 6,500 students. So that's that 6,498. We are considered a mid-size uh, population school. So I personally find that to be a great learning environment and also gives you a ton of opportunity to meet new students along the way, but also great, great opportunity to get your close-knit group of friends right when you come to Hofstra, which is awesome. We do also offer small class sizes. So I like to say you get the best of both worlds with having a larger, you know, feel to a campus environment. Overall, our campus is 244 acres. Um, but when you are going to class, it is a nice small class size. So our average class size is 21 with a student to faculty ratio of 13 to one. So you've got a ton of personal attention in the classroom and your professor will really get to know you and make sure that you're successful in their class. A lot of times you might have a lecture in the first half of your class with your professor and then they might break you off into discussion groups following your class and to talk about it with your peers. So it gives you a lot of different types of learning in the classroom. We do offer about 165 different undergraduate programs. So anything you may be interested in, we probably have it offered at Hofstra. 
and we do have the opportunity for students to double major or major and also have a minor um, in various programs and you can major across different disciplines as well. We are also represented from about 48 different states and 78 different countries. So our population on campus, you're always meeting new people from different walks of life, which is really great. So our location of Hofstra, if you have heard of Hofstra before, that's great. A lot of times the name might be new to you. The location of our campus is of course within New York State. Specifically, we are on Long Island. So if you have not heard of Long Island before or not too familiar with it, we are a large suburb. So we have a ton of activities and things to do nearby campus. We have one of the largest malls um, on the East Coast within about 10 minutes away, beaches, parks, anything that you might be interested in doing around campus, all very close distance um, and easily navigated with our Hofstra shuttle on campus. Like I said, we do have about a 244 acre campus. So that bottom left picture is a typical day on our college campus. Students are always outside walking around, having lunch, hanging out with their friends. So it's a really, really great environment to see. We are also very close to New York City. It's about a 40 minute train ride from Hofstra's campus into Penn Station. So that gives you a ton of great connections to the New York City life. If you do wanna be able to be close to the city but still be able to live on a typical large college campus, then we definitely have that for you. A lot of our students take advantage of the internship opportunities by being so close to New York City. A majority of our students, about 70%, have at least one internship by the time they graduate. Some students will even have two or three by the time they graduate. We work with a ton of big name companies within the city, um, ABC, CBS, Netflix, Google, anything that you can think of, we will make that connection for you. You'll work hand in hand with our career center on campus in order to apply for internships and make those networking connections for your ultimate career goal. One of the biggest things of being a Hofstra student is our Hofstra pride and being involved on campus. So we have over 220 student clubs and organizations varied from academic organizations, dance and acapella groups, fraternities and sororities. Um, if we do not have a club on campus that you are interested in having, you can create it on our campus, which is awesome. All of our student leaders are very involved on campus campus. They spend about 100,000 hours each year um, giving back to the community, whether that's in the local area or out in the city or in their hometown. It's definitely something that our Hofstra students genuinely want to do and give back. We are also a Division I school for athletics. We have 21 NCAA Division I sports teams. You can see right there, the bottom right picture is our men's basketball team. Very excited that we made it to March Madness this year. Unfortunately, due to COVID, of course, we were not able to play this year, but it was very exciting and it is a big opportunity for spirit support on our campus. Our students love to go support our athletic teams on campus and really take part in all of those raffles and giveaways and get some free Hofstra swag, which is nice. For every Division I team, we also have that same sport on a club level. So if you are interested in club and intramural sports, there's that opportunity as well. We do also guarantee four years of on-campus housing, so you don't have to worry about potentially losing place on campus. You can absolutely live on campus all four years that you are a student, but it is not required. You are welcome to live off campus if you would like. We do offer a ton of different varieties for living on campus as far as living learning communities. If you would like to live with students in the same major as you who are also from outside of New York State, we have those opportunities as well. Just some application deadlines for you. We offer early action one and two, both are non-binding. November 15th and December 15th are those deadlines and then rolling admission after that. You can apply using the Common App or Hofstra's personal application. We are also a test optional school, so if your scores do not fall within that range, absolutely not a problem. Definitely apply test optional and you will still be considered for scholarships, just as all of our applicants would be. And our average GPA is a 3.7 overall. And this is my contact information. If you do have any questions, I am happy to answer, of course, during this session or any time after, um, and I would love to connect with you. Thank you. Christy, that was a great reminder. Um, those that are listening, please don't hesitate to 
put your questions in the Q&A. Um, next up, you're going to hear from the University of Pittsburgh. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey from the University of Pittsburgh um, and I am your regionally based admissions counselor. So I'm based in Southern California, but I work with all of our California students. So I hope to meet you in person one day, but nice to meet you virtually tonight. So I'm going to give you a brief overview just about the city of Pittsburgh um, and what that students use and utilize in the city. Then I'll kind of jump in a little bit about academics, then the fun part, and then I'll finish with a few application uh, updates for this year. So if you are not familiar with Pitt's campus, we're a larger urban campus of around 19,000 undergraduate students three miles from downtown Pittsburgh. So a quick 10 minute bus right away. Uh, we get the best of both worlds on campus with that urban environment. So you know you're going to school in a city, um, but it's also a great college campus feeling and there's a wonderful college town. There are nine schools in about a five mile radius. So there are students everywhere. Um, as you can see from this photo, that wonderfully tall building is our Cathedral of Learning. It's 43 stories of classrooms and professors offices. Um, and it's kind of the centerpiece of our campus and then all of our campus buildings surround that. Downtown Pittsburgh, not far away, but even in that surrounding neighborhood and downtown, we have 18 Fortune 500 companies, so it's great for internships and networking. The Arts District is less than five minutes from campus, so uh, if you're into Broadway, concerts, different um, museums and theater, uh, we have all of that for you in Pittsburgh. Um, it's a big sports city, so even if you don't like sports, it's really fun to go to a school in a city um, that is passionate about their sports sports and feel that energy on big game days. It's a huge foodie city, so lots of different cuisine for you to try. Uh, and we encourage you to get off campus and go and explore um, throughout the week and on the weekends. Your student ID will be your all access pass, so you will get free public transportation with it. Uh, and we encourage you to use that to get to and from the airport to get um, all over the city and you do not need to bring a car to campus. But a little bit about the academic opportunities we have at Pitt and how that is structured for you is we have five freshman entry level schools. So in those schools, we're gonna have our Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences, our Swanson School of Engineering, uh, our College of Business Administration, our School of Computing and Information, and our School of Nursing. These are all direct entry programs um, and you will apply to one. And once you're admitted, there are no impacted majors in these schools. Um, so it gives you the flexibility to kind of explore the majors within um, and really dive into what you're most interested in and what you might not even have known you were interested in. So at Pitt, we have over 100 different majors and minors um, for you to choose from, uh, and we want you to explore those and really uh, see what else is out there. So um, with that, we also have a ton of different academic opportunities for you. We have a guaranteed internship program and co-op. Um, we have an undergraduate research starting as early as freshman year. If you're interested in the health sciences, we have six teaching hospitals on our campus alone, as well as 30 within the surrounding area um, of our campus. So a pediatrics, a women's, a veterans, psychiatric, trauma center, they're all gonna be available to you to shadow and get lots of clinical experience in. We also have hundreds of study abroad programs. Um, so if you can dream it, whether it's a semester, a year long, a week long, uh, we have programs that will fit your interests for that. But then the best part of being a student in college and especially at Pitt is going to be that student life. So we have um, at Pitt hundreds of student organizations. We're Division One sports. Our football team plays in the same stadium as the Steelers. So lots of energy. It's really fun to be um, in that Panther Pit on game day. Um, we have Pitt Arts, which is a wonderful program for students to connect with other students of similar interests and experience the arts within the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, and since we know you're coming from far away, we do have care guaranteed housing. Uh, so about 95% of our freshmen will live on campus and about 45% of those students will be from out of state. So you will be in good company. You're going to be joining, um, you know, 75 plus other students from California each year uh, on campus. Uh, and there will be over 20 different options for you to choose from for housing. So we want you to make that larger campus small within our housing and our student organizations and all the fun things we have to offer you as a student. 
And I'm going to finish up with just telling you a little bit about our application and some important updates. So just so you guys know, we do have optional short answer questions. We encourage you to do two out of the four. Um, this is the one place for you to kind of really showcase who you are uh, outside of your academics. And they are required for scholarships, um, for merit scholarships. So please make sure you do those if you are interested in being reviewed for a merit scholarship, which we'll review you automatically if you submit your application before December 15th. We are test optional this year, except for our nursing program. And if you are a nursing student and have been unable to take a test, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help um, you through that process. One other thing before I wrap up that's unique to Pitt is our graduate school guarantees. We have 20 of them. It's going to be a section on the application. Uh, you can look over them. And if you are interested in any of them, they range from education, pharmacy, medicine, law. Um, all it is is something extra for you as a student. If you come to Pitt, you might have a spot in our graduate school guarantee once you graduate from Pitt um, and you'll get that letter with your admissions letter to Pitt. So it's a really awesome opportunity that's pretty unique to Pitt um, and I strongly encourage you to check that out. Uh, so with that being said, um, oh, here are all of them. So if you want to look, all the ones on the left hand side um, are going to be the ones for you to choose from. So with that being said, uh, here's my contact information. I'd love for you to reach out. Um, any questions you have, I'm more than happy to uh, speak with you one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you all, and I'm gonna pass it off to the next school. Thanks so much, Kelsey. I'm now happy to introduce Marymount Manhattan College. Thank you, Courtney. All righty. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining me this evening. My name is Alexis McPadden. I am the West Coast Admission Rep for Marymount Manhattan College. I'm like located in New York City, uh, based out in New York City, and I am also an alum of Marymount. I graduated in 2018, um, and I was a double major in business and communications while studying there. Um, so we'll get started with a little bit more information about Marymount. So we are located in New York City. Um, we like to say it's the greatest city in the world. Um, you come here, you'll never be bored. We are an urban campus. Um, we're located on the Upper East Side. As you can see on the map on the right, um, we are on 71st Street, so Upper East Side. However, we do have two residence halls that are located in different neighborhoods. Our upper uh, upperclassmen residence hall is the one on the bottom of the screen down in the East Village on 6th Street. And then we have our first year residence hall, which is on 55th Street um, within walking distance from Times Square to Central Park uh, to the Museum of Modern Art. Um, so it's a really nice location to be living your freshman year. Uh, both of our residence halls are communal, uh, apartment style, sorry, so no communal bathrooms. Um, you are just sharing a bathroom with the students you live with, and you do also have a kitchenette. Um, other than that, we are 1,900 uh, students, just undergraduate uh, programs. We do have a student to faculty ratio of 11 to one. Average class size is 15. So you are in a large city being in New York. Um, however, Marymount is a very small, uh, very tight community. The class sizes will never go over 25 students. Um, so if you want a hands-on personalized education, Marymount uh, could be the school for you. We do offer 31 majors and 45 minors, and we have students from 49 states and Puerto Rico and 33 countries currently studying at Marymount. So we have five academic programs at Marymount. Uh, we are a liberal arts school, uh, four-year private. Uh, we, are, we have business, humanities and social sciences, communication and media arts, sciences, and then our fine and performing arts. So we offer Bachelor of Arts degrees, Bachelor of Science degrees, and Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees. Um, there are many different concentrations within these majors. As I mentioned before, we have 31. Um, and while it's not required, students are definitely encouraged to double major. Um, we actually allow students to triple major. So if there's lots of different areas of study you're interested in, um, you can do that at Marymount. We also have many different minors that students can double or triple minor in as well. So we like to say Marymount is a great school for students who have multifaceted interests. Um, as I mentioned, I was a business and communications double major. We have students that will double major in biology and dance. We have um, speech path and religious studies. So there's many different uh, combinations that you can have. 
one of the benefits of just being an undergraduate college is that if you're interested in any programs with labs, clinics, anything like that, you are first choice. So you're not competing against grad students, against PhD students. You get time in the lab, you get research time. Um, we do have a free speech pathology clinic in um, on campus. So if you're interested in speech path, you can get clinic hours at the undergraduate level. Um, and we have a 100% grad placement rate for our speech path program as well. In terms of admissions, so admission averages, before I start on that, I will preface we are um, test optional for fall 21. So if you have the opportunity to take tests, we do encourage you to do so, but it's not required by any means. Um, the first year academic profile average GPA is a 3.6 out of a 4.0, that is a weighted GPA, and average SAT is an 1100, average ACT is a 24. In terms of the application requirements, um, so we are on Common App, we also have our own Marymount application. We do need your high school transcript. Um, if you do uh, decide to submit test scores, we will need those. One letter of recommendation, your essay, and then the application fee as well. We have three admission plans, early decision, which is a November 1st deadline. You'll get a decision by December 1st. Enrollment deadline is uh, February 15th. That is a binding agreement. Early action, non-binding, December 1st. Um, you'll hear back by December 21st, and it's a May 1st deposit date. Um, same for regular decision, and those are read on a rolling basis. Anyone that's interested in dance, theater, or art, um, all of those materials do need to be uploaded. All your audition materials or portfolio materials need to be uploaded by May, uh, March 15th. We are hosting live auditions this year. So we have um, live virtual auditions. So they'll be held over Zoom. However, we are still accepting um, digital auditions as well. Average cost to attend Marymount uh, for students living on campus, the total is 56,304. That does include room and board and that includes the meal plan as well. Um, we do also have about a 25% commuter population. Um, so anyone that is commuting, it's gonna be $37,410. All students that apply are considered for merit-based scholarships, and that's based on your academic performance. Those scholarships do range from $4,000 to $18,000 per year, and they are renewable all four years with the minimum GPA requirement. And then anyone that's interested in any of our audition-based programs, um, we do also have talent-based scholarships. Um, and those are determined by the department that you are auditioning or submitting a portfolio for. And then lastly, I want to add that we are a stackable school. So what that means is you can stack any external scholarships right on top of your financial aid package um, and you'll be awarded that money. Lastly, we welcome you to stay connected um, on social media. We do, I'm going to shamelessly plug our TikTok. Um, we just started that. So if you want to see what's happening on campus, please follow us, NYC Marymount. Um, and we are actually starting um, on campus tours as well. So please look into those if you're traveling to the East Coast for any reason. Um, but I want to thank you all for joining me today and hope you have a great rest of your night. Thanks, Alexis. We're now headed to the Midwest. I'd like to introduce Marquette University. Perfect. Well, hello, everyone. I was just going to say the same thing, Courtney. We're kind of moving away um, from the East Coast, and we're getting to the Midwest. So my name is Lindsay Barbeau. Um, I have been an admissions counselor. I just celebrated five years, but this is actually my sixth fall cycle working with students from Northern California. So I wish I could be at your high schools meeting you all in person, um, but this is hopefully the next best thing. Um, so to kind of get us started, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Marquette University is located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about where uh, the city of Milwaukee in just a little bit, but um, if you don't know where Milwaukee is, take Chicago and drive an hour and a half north and you've hit the great city of Milwaukee. Um, Marquette, we can also consider ourselves a medium-sized school, and um, so we have about 8,000 undergraduates, a little bit over 8,000 undergraduates. Um, with our graduate students, we're about 11,500. So I always say you can always meet someone new, um, but if you kind of want to have that close-knit group of friends, you can always have that in addition. In addition to kind of our size, um, we are also a Jesuit institution, so we are a Jesuit Catholic institution. Um, if you are not familiar with the Jesuits, the Jesuits are a Catholic order of priests started about 500 years ago by St. Ignatius Loyola. 
So being in the San Jose area, most of you, um, if you've heard of Santa Clara, you're also Jesuit, um, we kind of have the same underlying beliefs as Santa Clara. And what are those beliefs? And we really want to go out and make the world a better place. So yes, we want to give you an education. And yes, we want you to go be a nurse or a physical therapist or a businesswoman, whatever it might be. But we also want to make sure that you can use those skills to, to help our world become a better place. And one of the other things that really kind of um, I appreciate, especially in the climate we're in, is Cura Personalis. And so the Jesuits believe in Cura Personalis, which is a Latin term that stands for care of the whole person. Um, I just think it's a good people term. And so at Marquette, we're not only going to make sure that you're getting educated um, in, in that classroom and, and we're mentally stimulating you. We also want to make sure um, that your physical, your mental, your spiritual health is all being taken care of while you're on Marquette campus. And that's something that's really, really important to us. So big things kind of there. Um, we're a mid-sized school and we are a Jesuit institution. Kind of moving on to academics, um, at Marquette, um, we are considered a direct entry institution. Um, so really what that means is when you apply to Marquette and you put down nursing, you are actually applying directly to the College of Nursing. If you put down marketing, you're applying directly to the College of Business. So you know before you even start classes at Marquette that you can go do that major, uh, whatever major you want. Um, so it's considered direct entry, um, and we do that process for you when you submit your application. If you're sitting here and you're like, Lindsay, I just I don't know what I want to do, um, that's okay. Um, at Marquette, we like to call you undecided. I'm sorry, we like to call you multi-interested instead of undecided. Um, and most of our multi-interested students will be in our College of Arts and Sciences, which is our largest college. Um, I like to say it's a little bit more liberal arts based, having classes in humanities, social sciences, um, and natural sciences. It's also where our academic advising, the main hub, will take place. Um, so all of our students are required to meet with their academic advisor at least twice um, before or, or twice a year before they register for the next round of classes. Um, our next academic colleges um, are the College of Business Administration and the College of Communications. I group these together because they are very similar. Um, the big difference is that our College of Business is a little bit more analytical, um, so really focusing on kind of the math preparation, um, whereas the College of Communication is more of those people skills. The really cool thing between those two colleges is each college has an internship guru, and that's what I like to call them. Um, we have about nine Fortune 500 companies right in southeastern Wisconsin, so we really do want to make sure our students are getting that hands-on experiences. Um, it will not only tell you if you like the job that you're doing, but also hopefully build connections for job after education. Our College of Education has three majors, and um, so two of them are going to be kind of the typical classroom teacher majors. And but then they, we also have an educational studies major. So if you've ever decided you wanted to be a school counselor or a college counselor, this is a great major for that. Or maybe you want to work with um, field trips that go to the zoo and you do the educational programming. This is kind of a unique major for that. Um, all of our education majors are focused in urban education since we are an urban campus. Um, the College of Engineering is obviously home to our College of Engineering, um, but it, it does boast that 90% of our engineering students are getting that real world hands on experiences and most of our engineering students are getting that through co-ops. Um, so if you haven't heard of co-ops, it's like an internship on steroids. Um, it's a little bit of a longer commitment, um, but it does have a 100% job placement rate and we have one of the oldest co-op programs in the country. And then our College of Health Sciences and our College of Nursing, this is where you're going to find nursing and physical therapy and physician's assistants and research focused uh, majors. And we do have some direct entry physical therapy programs, which is usually pretty popular. And we are ranked in the top, I believe, 20 of physical therapy programs. And we do, uh, all of our health sciences and nursing students are doing clinicals. And we have 28 area hospitals around the Milwaukee area, um, which allows our students kind of easy access to gain that experience, whether it's volunteer or clinicals. Moving on just a little bit, talking about that real world experience. We are located in the great city of Milwaukee. Um, I am super biased. I think it's the best city ever, but I was also born and raised there. And, but we really do have that Midwest charm. Um, so if you've ever heard of a bubbler um, at Marquette, we call a bubbler a water fountain. So this is kind of just an overview of kind of the city of Milwaukee. And then last but not least, to talk a little bit about the application cycle, we are enrolling in missions. Um, so we don't have any early action or early decision. We just recommend you get your application by December 1st. 
Um, we are also test optional. This is our second year of being test optional. So I'm um, just kind of a priority there. And we do have scholarships that students can qualify for. Lastly, really, really quick, I know I'm short on time, um, but this is my contact information. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I am more than happy to set up any other virtual appointments or resources for you. Thank you, Lindsay. Our final presentation tonight will be the University of Portland. Hi, everyone. My name is Martin Williams. I am the Associate Director of Admissions here at the University of Portland. I'm not quite as savvy as my colleagues, my previous colleagues in the whole uh, PowerPoint thing. So give me a moment. All right. Whoops. All right, so I am the Bay Area rep. Uh, I'm also a recovering Californian. So hopefully that gives me a little bit of street cred with you all. I use pronouns he, him, and his. Uh, and I am the person that will be reviewing your application. So you have to be nice to this guy. Uh, if you are attending any of the Catholic high schools down there in the area, I will be doing a full-blown presentation sometime soon for MIDI. It is next week. Please come and see me. So this uh, will be a pretty quick snapshot of University of Portland. Many of you know that we are in fact a Catholic institution. We are associated with the Congregation of Holy Cross. We are Oregon's Catholic University. So we're the only game in town when it comes to higher education affiliated with the Catholic faith. We believe strongly in that quintessential Catholic liberal arts education. We want you well-read, well-rounded, well-spoken, we want you intelligent, intellectual. We also want you to have a strong sense of ethical, moral responsibility to that world that you'll be facing after you finish up. The trick is not getting a major, it's to be educated and to be ready for the changes that come your way. We are relatively small, 4,000 undergraduate students, and that relates to smaller class sizes, small student faculty ratio, which allows our students to get to know their, their professors. Uh, we don't have huge auditorium classrooms. We don't have any TAs. We don't have any grad assistants. All our programs are designed as four-year programs. We are in fact a teaching university. So all of your courses will be taught by professors, no TAs, no grad assistants. In addition to that, we have, well, I shouldn't say in addition, but we do have five different colleges for students to choose from. College of Arts and Sciences is the bread and butter of the university. This is where all your liberal arts courses will come from. We have degrees in the sciences, the social sciences, as well as the humanities. We do offer four nationally professionally accredited programs in the School of Business Administration, School of Education, School of Nursing, and the School of Engineering. The School of Nursing is as well direct entry, so you never have to worry about reapplying once you're in the program. The education program is now offering a three plus one program, which allows our students to graduate in four years with both the undergraduate and the master's degree. So you save time, you save money, you come away with two degrees, and you're going to be very, very marketable. The key to the education at UP is the advising. We really, truly cater to the individual. Every student gets an advisor right from the get-go, as soon as they step on to the grounds of the campus. The advisor is there to help students understand and navigate the graduation requirements. What do I need in terms of the core curriculum? The advisor is there for someone to turn to, to ask questions about electives within their major as well as outside of the major. Undecided students will get a dedicated professional. Their main duty is to help that undecided student. We want to help them move in the direction where they can make it a, 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 an informed decision about what studies are best for them. The majority of our students do study multiple disciplines here. So an advisor can help students navigate what to take to get a minor, to double major, as well as trying to figure out if they can study abroad. No matter where you go to college, go study abroad. So even our engineers, even our nurses are going to places like Austria and Australia and South Korea and London and uh, uh, Dublin and so on and so forth. Where I think we shine uh, terrifically is in giving our students the professional opportunities. Internships, 
field placements for education majors, clinicals for nursing majors, research opportunities for STEM, for social science students. We don't have grad students in the majority of our subjects. So students are able to tack onto a professor's research opportunity. But being in Portland, Oregon, it's such a robust city. It's a great place where students can get some work experience before they finish up. The School of Business requires the internship. Engineers can participate in a form of co-op program. We even have an internship coordinator in the arts and sciences. So even you, you history majors and English majors can get some work experience. And the key for this is helping our students gain a competitive advantage for after they graduate. We don't want you moving back to your childhood bedroom at the age of 22. We want you employable. You get an internship for Nike, you're gonna get hired by Nike. And then lastly, we do also offer pre-professional programs, advising to help students get into med school, physical therapy school, law, occupational uh, uh, therapy, dentistry, so on and so forth. Uh, what the advisor will do, help students understand curriculum, grades, test scores, so on and so forth. In the last three years, we have had 14 graduates who have scored above the 95th percentile on the MCATs. This is a real reason to come to Portland, Oregon. The beauty about Portland is that it's not 3,000 miles away, no offense to my colleagues. It is a short uh, hop, skip and a jump, about an hour and 20 minutes from San Jose to get up here via plane, of course. Uh, it is a big city, but we're not an urban campus. So we have 150 acres on the north side of town. And this isolation helps us build a true sense of community. We do require you to live on campus your freshman year. We have more Californians on campus than we do any other state. Uh, you can stay on campus all four years if you want to. And the true sense of community is what makes the education a unique experience uh, here at the University of Portland. Here are the, some basics. Uh, seniors, I can talk to you uh, a little bit later uh, at your schools regarding the application process, but we do utilize the Common App. We do uh, recommend that you apply before November 15th to gain a, an advantage. Thank you, everyone. I wish you all the best of luck. Happy Pandemic Thursday to everyone. Take care. Thank you so much. Um, with our minute left or a couple minutes left, I would like to ask some questions of um, our panelists. And if you could give a, um, a piece of advice to seniors right now watching, um, if you had 10 seconds, what, would, what piece of advice would you give them? And if I could start with um, Pace University. In 10 seconds, my advice would be to get it over with early, get those applications in and done with early so that you can enjoy the rest of your senior year, take a breath, relax, um, early action. If you can, you know, in the next couple of months, if you can get those all in, then you'll feel so much better come after, after December break, you're going to feel good that you got all that done. You'll know where you're going next fall. That's my little piece of advice. That's a good piece. How about from Hofstra? I would say my piece of advice is don't be afraid to try something new. Um, of course, I cannot wait to review your applications personally and hope that you come over to New York. Um, but don't be afraid to try something new wherever you may go to college and try something new um, for your major. You know, this is the opportunity to branch out um, and see all different potential opportunities and make those lifelong friends. So definitely take advantage of those four years at college because they go by very fast. Super fast. Kelsey, what advice would you give? The advice that I would give is pay attention to deadlines um, and don't try to cut them very close because that never works out well. So pay attention and then you won't be stressed out um, later down the road because you miss them. Alexis, what do you have for the group? I would say ask questions. You can never ask too many questions. That's what we're here for. Go in with an open mind. One school that you may not think is for you might be the one for you. So um, go in with an open mind and uh, never hesitate to reach out Great. to any counselor. <laughs> Great one. 
Lindsay, what's your voice of wisdom? I'm gonna kind of go off Alexis. I think in addition to asking questions, we normally are all on the road right now and we are traveling and we are doing a lot. Um, and we can't do that this year, or we're doing very little of it. So use our virtual resources, um, our virtual tours, or one-on-one um, -on -one meetings, or presentations. Like, that's a great way. It's not ideal, but it's a great way to get information on a whole slew of colleges that you might have never thought of before. Great one. And finally, Martin, what would you say? Parents, get on the financial aid application now. Also, students, Look for independent scholarships. 50% of them go unused in the United States. You gotta go find them there. You gotta pick up every rock possible and look for as much help as you can outside of the institutions. Well, what a great panel tonight. Um, great questions, uh, great information. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there'll be a short, very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. This was also just one of the many sessions that's being offered tonight. So um, if you can, uh, be sure to sign up for some additional sessions. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as any other session recordings. Thanks so much and have a great evening, guys.